Good afternoon, everyone. Chris Grandy, ChrisGrandy.com, Walnut Hill Advisors. I thought I'd talk today about a really cool article I had read a couple of months ago and wanted to address it in a uh, article and in a video and just uh, finally get around to it now. And uh, the topic of the article was seven reasons your financial planner can replace your uh, therapist. And it was written by a, a financial columnist, Lou Carlozo, who's uh, uh, has written many financial articles. He's a syndic uh, his articles appear all nationwide. And I just thought that was an interesting topic. I said, well, let me look into this further. And so uh, he listed seven points and I wanna go down those points and just uh, address them as uh, as they go along. So I'm gonna just uh, also reference my notes while I talk to you, but let's, let's look at these seven points here. Number one, he says, um, planners can help mediate financial matters. And certainly um, I've dealt with this in my practice, married, uh, you know, we get spouses and people looking to get married and, and they have to, come together about what's going on with their money and what they're doing. And uh, certainly if, if you know one spouse is a spender, one's a saver, et cetera, you know, those are the common kind of differences. But you have these type of things going on, or, you know, we can, financial planners can really step in there and help people understand what they're doing and, 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 uh, and um, you know, solve some of these problems that cause a lot of issues, you know. Number two, um, assist family members in developing a legacy. So we also have issues, you know, sometimes we're dealing with our, our older clients and they're wondering, you know, how they should create their estate plan, leave stuff to kids, etc. And there's so many ways you can do that. And we can certainly help. Uh, this can cause a lot of stress for people because they're not sure, you know, how, you know, how much should we keep to ourselves? How much should we be leaving for kids? How much uh, should each kid get? How should they get it? You know, some kids are responsible, some aren't. So with those type of questions, um, you know, those are, those are big issues and, uh, and we can certainly help address that. So uh, number three, um, turning uh, current uh, turmoil into rational strategy. A lot of times someone will come to me, they're stressed out, and the problem is they don't have a plan. And uh, they don't, and when, by not having a plan, it's very hard to see, um, you know, the long-term benefits of small decisions you make day to day. So, you know, if, if someone, you know, we all know, we've, a lot of people have seen or heard the kind of anecdotes, you know, if you save $200 a month, you'll have this in 40 years, da da da. Kind of hard for people to visualize that, especially when they're stressed out about money. It could be having too much debt and not realizing, you know, how much an extra couple hundred dollars a month can help pay that off, how much quicker. Or it could be uh, someone just getting started with savings or feeling they're behind on savings or feeling like they uh, are not saving enough to realize how much they'll have in the future by, by making regular savings. So we certainly, by creating a strategy, which planners are great at doing and, 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 and looking at all the pros and cons of different options, by creating a strategy, you could certainly take that uh, turmoil in your mind and, and turn it into something that is, uh, you know, you get something to shoot for and to realize, well, I can, I can do something here. Uh, number four point he brings up is turning confusion into clarity. And I believe that's the same thing as, as the, um, you know, as, as the, you know, coming out with a rational strategy, you know. Um, you know, and, and he kind of breaks up the two points I kind of just mentioned where uh, someone's doing the wrong things or they haven't started yet, etc. He kind of breaks up into these two points. But the last point in this one are related. Uh, you know, when you were talking clarity, say, well, if I can save... Uh, you know, two hundred dollars a month, etc. Or if um, you know, if I make these small steps right now in in saving for college, if I can, you know, or man, I can't afford. Uh, you know, we really need uh, uh, you know a million dollars of life insurance. Can't afford that. Well, you know, uh, you know, your spouse probably uh, won't do as well with half a million. But if that's what you can afford, you should get it now, especially while you're healthy. I mean, these are just kind of the rational things a planner can tell you. Uh, you know, get something in place. For yourself um, you know also the fifth thing he brings up is planners not how, know how to overcome the fear factor and this is important because everybody has uh, you know different types of, uh, of fear like they may um, they may fear um, well one of the easy ones is the market stock market everybody's you know people who haven't saved in the stock market and maybe people who have experience in the last 15 years both would be kind of scared and it's a planner's job to, to, to kind of Bring that into perspective and say, okay, well, um, you know, here's the kind of risk we could take. Here's what likely happened to you. Here's what you know may happen in, in real circumstances, etc. Walk you through those scenarios so that it's not as scary and crazy as 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 
you know, as hyped up um, news articles or um, reports on TV might make it sound. So we can certainly bring um, some sensibility to that fearful conversation about things that, um, you know, also, you know, it is change. You know, sometimes uh, creating a, and, and following through on a financial plan requires change. And planners are often very good at, at helping people take baby steps, like I mentioned earlier. And you know what? Just get some insurance in place. Start saving something. You know, I, I love to get people who have saved nothing. Just say, hey, you know what? Just take 50 bucks out of your paycheck, put it in your 401k, and tell me two or three months from now if you feel the difference. And if they don't, uh, they, maybe they could save more. But just getting started, I can't say, hey, you know what? Just start off at 1000 a month. That just horrifies people. And they're like, well, I'm not going to be able to pay my bills. Um, so very, very important. Um, um, six, financial planning can help you stop lying to yourself. This, I think, um, the biggest, the first example that comes to my mind is, is the budget. And, you know, I did a budget for myself about two weeks ago, you know, number, I did a business and a personal budget. And, you know, I was, I was pretty pleased with where things were, but I also did a budget about eight months ago and I, I inventoried everything I was spending and I found that, and this may be the case with you too, is I found I had a lot of little subscriptions to things I thought I would use, read, etc., that I just wasn't using at all. You know, five bucks a month here, thirty dollars a year there. It added up to you know a lot of money, and just to uh, cut those out, you know, and realize, okay, these are the ones I, this is the subscriptions I'm using. I want to read. These are the ones that I'm not going to read, and, and getting through that. That was a big deal, and so um, we can help. Planners can help you create a budget. Can. Uh, you know, and, and if this is your kids you're worried about or, or, or someone you care about, you know, we can help people um, get out of fantasy land or, or just at least uh, get realistic about stuff by creating a budget. And by creating that budget, um, it being one example of turning uh, kind of, uh, you know, when you, if you're lying to yourself about what you're spending, here's what it really is. And you get a lot of clarity from that. So that's one example. There are many areas where people feel, hey, you know, I'm okay. I don't need to do anything else or this debt's not a problem, etc. But I find the budget is the best example of, uh, of lying to yourself. Because once you do your own budget, you're like, it's sometimes for some people, it's a smack on the head. For other people, maybe they remember everything they spend, it's no big deal. But for a lot of people, uh, I had a client tell me this last week, she was just wowed when she did her own budget. So wow, she just, you know, it was empowering. She sees what she spends. Her plan is great. She's got the assets and the income to take care of her for the rest of her life. But it was good to do that budget so she knew that. Um, <clears throat> Last thing he does is you have a partner in converting um, bad beliefs into good plans. Uh, he, he quotes a, a well-known financial planner in Kansas uh, uh, talking about um, um, people's psychological weaknesses. And one of the particular conditions he talks about is uh, confirmation bias. And that is, if we believe something, whether or not it's true, we will f look and find data that backs up what we believe. So it's confirming what we believe, even if it's wrong. So it's confirmation bias. We are biased towards a certain way of believing things. And, uh, you know, so for example, you might, uh, you know, you might, some people might say, well, you know, I'm not spending too much money. Debt's not too bad. Maybe they look on TV and say, you know, the average household has, you know, 13,000 in credit card debt and has, you know, only 56,000 saved or something ridiculously small number. And they might say to themselves, well, I only got 8,000 in credit card debt and I've got, you know, 98,000 all is saved, etc." So they may, you know, they may just kind of confirm, hey, I'm doing okay. It may be, that may not be enough, but at least in that case, they, you know, they're, they're confirmed that they're fine. Issues like that, uh, you know, habits and things um, that can be changed, uh, it's important, you know, and, and it's good to have a realistic partner there to help you. Now, with all this being said, um, you know, seven, uh, can your financial planner replace your therapist? You know, this is not geared towards people who have um, medical issues. I mean, you've got a serious medical or serious depression, clinical depression. That's not what we're talking about. But many times, couples, uh, one of the big things they fight over is money. One of the big things that parents and children have an issue with is money, you know, inheritance, things like that. Uh, these are, uh, are, are not necessarily something that you may, you, know, you may say, well, I'm going to go see a therapist. This person doesn't know what they're doing. It may just be a matter, a, a lack of, uh, of planning. It may be a lack of focus. It may just be, you know, needing somebody to kind of guide. In those situations, I would say, you know what, a financial planner can be really helpful here. Uh, if you do have a serious uh, medical or mental issue, you certainly should go see a licensed therapist. But, but there's a lot of cases, especially when fighting about money, et cetera, that, that, um, 
that I think a financial planner could be a good start to get there. And I know in many cases, I am listening to, to spouses talk to each other and, and, and maybe go back and forth. And it's, it's great to be that helpful uh, medium in, in that uh, in that situation. So there's been plenty of cases where I feel like a, an amateur therapist in a way. Uh, and the good thing is, is, you know, <laughs> you come see me, it doesn't go down in your medical record. You weren't seeing a therapist, you're seeing your financial planner. Maybe someday it will be added to your medical record, you know. Uh, John and Mary saw that financial planner 17 times this month because they keep fighting over, you know, maybe that'll happen. But in, in, all, in all seriousness, I do think a financial planner can really step in there and help you. Uh, from uh, linchpins that are watching this, um, you know, you my linchpin clients, linchpin uh, people, uh, viewers, you know, linchpin I, I characterize as somebody who is the important person, either the family, the community, who's helping, you know, helping your kids, you're helping your parents, you're helping your church, you're helping your town, you're involved, you're a busy person. You may have somebody that uh, that needs help with this, etc. Uh, you know, make sure you, you contact me if you're a client, and if you're not, even if you're not, you want to help someone. I talk to a few people every week from around the nation that contact me through my 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 blogs, my articles. Just call my find stuff on my website. They want to talk to me about annuities or this IRA question or 72T and all kinds of technical stuff that I, I write about. Uh, feel free to give um, schedule an online appointment with me at the on with the online booking tool. I'd be happy to talk to you about. Uh, coming up with strategies if you have a, a someone you care about that needs uh, needs some straight you know needs to be needs to talk to someone and get some focus we'd love to help with that in the meantime we have plenty more articles on our site please uh, read them please uh, um, you know comment if you like and uh, you know if I can help in any way let me know and hope you guys have a, a, a great rest of your week and uh, look forward to seeing you on the next video thanks again for watching